Well, that concludes the Champions League semi-final first legs. And wow, it's been an absolutely fantastic week so far. But does that mean we're done with action for the week? Absolutely not. So if you want some Premier League action or some semi-final action in Europa League and Conference League, then stay tuned because that's what we're about to cover in this video on the Thursday Soccer Slate. What's happening, everyone? Sam, a.k.a. FIFA Brit from Gold Boys. And yeah... Champions League is wrapped up for the week. The second legs are next week and we are set up for some absolute bangers. But before we get there, we have Premier League, we've got Europa League, we've got Conference League and some really, really good matchups that I can't wait to talk about. As always, this video is sponsored by Sleeper Picks. Stay tuned for more on that later. First game we're going to talk about is in the Premier League. We have a mid-week EPL fixture to make up for some missed games earlier in the season between Chelsea and Spurs. Neither of these teams is playing particularly well, but both of them like to attack and neither of them are very good at defending. So this game, on paper, should be an absolute banger. Unfortunately, the books do kind of know that because both teams to score in over two and a half is minus 237 on Fandle. That is gross. Don't bet that. However, it does mean that we are expecting a pretty exciting game. So you know what that means? If you know me by now, you know exactly what that means. It means we're betting shots. Fuck yeah. So, the problem with first half shot builders is that yes, you can bet first half shots ahead of lineups, but I don't really do that with builders because if someone in a builder doesn't play, then you have like a whole unit on like a minus 300 leg. And to me, that's not really worth the risk, all things considered. I don't mind doing it with lottos ahead of time, but with builders, not so much. So I'm going to share a couple of ideas, things that I like, but I will not lock anything in for sure until we get lamps for the game. I will share my builder on Twitter. If you're not following me, it is at FIFA Brit. Go ahead and do that right now. But everything else will be absolutely locked in in my channel in Gold Boys. So if you haven't signed up, now is a fantastic time to do it. If you missed it, I hit a plus 12k odds banger on the Wednesday Champions League game. So yeah, it's a fantastic time to join. Go ahead and do that right now. Link will be in the description. Anyway, Chelsea against Spurs. I really like this game. I think there are a lot of, a lot of players that like to shoot in this game. So I think there's a lot of potential, definitely for a builder, and hopefully for another banger of a lotto. The guys I'm looking at are Palmer, obviously. If you don't know about Cole Palmer by now, where have you been? He's playing absolutely fantastically for Chelsea. Cole Palmer and Nicholas Jackson on the Chelsea side. Even Mudrick, if you're playing on the left wing. Mudrick likes to rip. It really all depends on how well Cole Palmer is facilitating, and if he's in a shooting mood versus a passing mood. Usually, he's pretty good at both. And Mudrick will shoot from probably anywhere because the dude's desperate right now. He needs something. He needs a win. On the Spurs side, definitely Hyung Min's son. Especially if he's playing at striker. He played really well, honestly, in the derby against Arsenal, even though Arsenal won. Deservedly so, if you're a hater and you think that we got lucky. We did not. We deserve to win. Spurs suck. But Son is a good player, and I can't argue with that. Great penalty, great player. If he's playing at striker, love that. Honestly, even if he's playing at left wing like he usually does. Love him to shoot there as well. He's a good player. Another guy I like on Spurs is Brennan Johnson. He had a couple of shots in the first half against Arsenal, and the prices on him are usually pretty good. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see exactly where Ange decides to play him, because he can play on the right wing instead of Kulisevsky, or he can play on the left wing instead of Timo Werner. Now, Timo Werner came off hurt, and he is done for the season, so my guess is Brennan Johnson will be playing on the left wing, and honestly, it doesn't really matter. If he's playing... He's got a lot of upside. Now, is he super reliable? Would I use him in a builder? Probably not. But if he does shoot, he usually shoots a couple of times. And so he's, a, he's usually a nice, good piece for a lotto. So in my head, I'm thinking Cole Palmer, Nicholas Jackson, Son, and Brennan Johnson for two first half shots each. I'm hoping that's going to be somewhere in the region of plus 4,000 or so odds-wise. If all those guys are starting, I'm going to log that in tomorrow when lineups drop. And if I was doing a builder for this game, Cole Palmer... And Hyung Min Sun to take a single shot in the first half each is minus 128. Love the price on that. I would take that. Anything on the right side of minus 135. Once it gets past that, don't really love it as much. But those are pretty reliable shooters, all things considered. 
So if those guys are starting, that will almost certainly be my builder for that game as well. Wait, before we get back to the picks, I wanted to thank you all for watching. Woo! Friends don't let friends watch videos without hitting the like button. So go ahead and press the thumbs up button and like the video. If you're new here and not subscribed, you should go ahead and do so because we're dropping new content each and every day on the Gold Boys Network. We strive to cover every sport and give out picks and analysis and valuable information for free on the Gold Boys Network. So make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell so you can get notified when we drop something new. I'm Brad Thomas. Let's get back to the picks. Well, moving on to the action in Europe, starting off with the Conference League. Now, I very rarely talk about the Conference League in my previous videos, but as we're at the semi-finals and there are only two games on, it's fair enough that I talk about them. Now, just a warning ahead of time, a couple of these teams I don't really watch regularly because I can't bet their domestic leagues in New York. I can only bet on the Conference League when it rolls around, and really, now that it's the semi-finals, I actually am starting to take an interest, but usually I'm a Europa League and I'm a Champions League guy. So I'll tell you what I know, but just to be upfront, not a subject matter expert. There are people that don't live in New York that watch these teams and bet them almost every week. If you want more like in-depth, you know, like beat reporter type intel, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not afraid to say other people know more than me, but stick around because we're talking pretty valuable info here if you're trying to piece together your own plays. So first game we're going to talk about Aston Villa against Olympiakos. Now I like Aston Villa. They're a good team. They might make Champions League, which would be so cool, especially if they beat Spurs to that last Champions League spot. They're playing Olympiacos. Now, I don't know much about Olympiacos, but I do know a lot about Aston Villa. Ollie Watkins has the most goal contributions in the entire Premier League. That's ridiculous, if you think about it, considering the guys he's up against. You know, I know De Bruyne was injured, but De Bruyne, obviously Haaland, is a huge one. Ollie Watkins is ahead of all of these guys. If he doesn't win, player of the season in the in the Premier League and they give it to Foden instead, I'm going to be furious. And it's not because I dislike Foden, it's because I think what Ollie Watkins is doing is absolutely incredible and is not getting enough recognition. Ollie Watkins is scoring assist. He's playing really well in the league. He's playing really well in the Conference League. And this is England's last chance for an English team to win anything in Europe. Everyone else has been knocked out. And I think he knows that. The Euros are coming up. He's not going to start ahead of Kane, obviously. But he's still going to be fighting for a spot on the bench, and maybe he can come off the bench in, you know, depending on the game. He's still got a lot to play for here, including player of the season, and whatever Euro playing time he can get with the existence of Harry Kane. So, all that said, Holly Watkins, a score and assist. Really, I wouldn't look much else on the Villa side. Bailey's usually good for assists, Diaby's usually good for a shot on target, especially if he's playing up front, but Holly Watkins is the main guy. On the Olympiacos side, El Kabi is their top scorer by a long way. Very solid player. If you're looking for them to score a goal, probably going to go through him. Also, Podence. Daniel Podence, I believe, used to play for Wolves back in the day, a few years ago. Now plays for Olympiacos. Usually good for a goal or an assist. Doesn't put up crazy numbers, but if his to score or assist is above, like, plus 150 to plus 200, very solid value. The guy helps out in multiple ways. The next Conference League semi-final. Fiorentina against Club Bruges. To put this very simply, I don't know why I said a Scottish accent. Bruges is from Belgium. I don't know why I said Bruges, because that's not at all where they're from. Very different parts of the, of, of the continent. But uh, yeah, for Fiorentina, Nico Gonzalez, he's their main scorer. If he's playing up top or if he's playing attacking mid, very solid player. If they're scoring, probably going to go through him. On the Bruges side, Thiago Rodriguez. He's their main scorer again. What I love about teams with main scorers, yes, other guys can show up. But if you have a guy that's like clearly the top scorer on this team and he's starting, sometimes you just don't have to overthink it. Trust the guy that is playing really well in these games and don't overthink it. Moving on to the Europa League. We've got some really great matchups in the Europa League. Marseille against Atalanta. Again, super easy when a team has a main guy. For Marseille, if you don't know, that main guy is Pia Emmerich Aubameyang. Used to play for Arsenal, now he plays for Marseille. And he's not he's a striker, but he's not just a threat in front of goal. He can actually rack up assists. If you can get a nice number, like above plus 500 on his assist, 
that might be that might be a really nice play especially if you're looking to combine it with something else or a straight play but honestly don't overthink it a bamiyang to score an assist if it's over even money that's great value he is the main guy he will almost certainly be involved in one of their goals if they do score on the atalanta side a little bit more tricky they like to share the love Skamaka up front in really really good form right now he is scoring left right and center if he's playing up front i love him however their top scorer is actually their attacking mid coop miners i believe he also takes pens they do like to rotate their pen takers so it can be kind of difficult to predict who's going to take them but he's usually good for a goal or an assist not in fantastic form right now, but if he's playing attacking mid rather than center mid, which he sometimes does, he drops back a little bit further if other guys are playing at attacking mid. If he's playing at attacking mid, a goal contribution, so to score or assist, if that's above plus 100, love that. Same with Skamaka, just for a goal. He's been in great form recently. I trust him to score. What's up, everyone? I just want to say a special thank you to the sponsor of this video, Sleeper Picks. Don't forget that you can use code GOLDBOYS to get a deposit match of up to $500 if you sign up today. Thank you again, Sleeper Picks, for sponsoring this video. And now, back to the bets. The last Europa League semi final, probably the one that people are most excited about, is Roma against Leverkusen. The reason being is because Leverkusen still somehow haven't lost a fucking game all season. As an Arsenal fan, I'm not really sure how that makes me feel. Kinda want them to lose in the league so they don't have this unbeaten streak. That being said, if they win a treble, it's not the treble because that would be a Champions League, but a treble because they've won the Bundesliga, they're in the final of the German Cup with the DFB, DFB Pokal, whatever it's called, whatever the German equivalent of the FA Cup is, they're in the final of that. And then the semi-finals of the Europa League. If they could win all three of those trophies without losing a single game, that's like one of the greatest domestic club achievements of all time. Definitely better than the Invincibles, probably only beaten by Leicester when in the Premier League, which will probably never be beaten by anyone ever again. But yeah, that would be an absolutely fantastic achievement, and they know that's on the line as well. They are playing away from home, though, and they do have to play in Rome. Roma have been very solid recently ever since their new manager took over they weren't playing brilliantly before now they actually look like a side that can contend for this trophy they're going to want to play the role of upset they're going to want to get a result at home this is a weird game it could be high scoring or it could be really low scoring it's one of those ones that i'm really not sure and i wouldn't pick a side when it comes to goal totals but i know which players i can trust on the roma side Dybala, if he's playing love him to score or assist lukaku not in brilliant form, but he's a good striker. Is he as reliable as Dybala for a goal or contribution or an assist? No, I wouldn't say so. I like Dybala more. But if they're both starting up front, love that. Really, really, really like that. On the Leverkusen side, if Boniface is healthy and starting up front, love him. If he's not and Schick gets the start, I like him as well. Their main guy, especially for just scoring or assisting, for any goal contribution, Florian Wurz, if he's playing at attacking mid or that inside forward role they run in there, like 3-4-2-1 kind of thing, if he's playing that inside forward slash winger role, love him to score and assist. His shot on target's usually around even money or close to it. I would take that around like minus 120. Usually really, really nice odds because he doesn't shoot that much, but when he does, it's usually on target, and honestly, it's usually a goal. Same thing with their wingbacks, Frimpong and Grimaldo. Grimaldo takes free kicks. If their shot on target numbers are above plus 100, love those guys as well. This should be a really interesting match, whether it's high scoring, whether it's low scoring. So I'm really excited to watch that one. That'll be the game that I'm actually going to watch on TV. But yeah, we have some really, really interesting games coming up. And I'm looking forward to seeing how these teams line up so I can lock in some official picks. As always, my official picks will be in my Discord channel in Gold Boys. But like I said earlier, I will do my best to share a couple of reads on Twitter as well. You can follow me at FIFA Brit. And yeah, that's our Thursday soccer slate analysis. As always, if you do have a gambling problem, don't forget to call the number 1-800-GAMBLER. And yeah, have a fantastic week, guys. I hope you made a load of money on the Champions League. If you did, that's great. Let's keep that momentum going into the Thursday slate. If not, no worries. We have time to turn it around. So yeah, best of luck with all your bets, and I'll catch you next time.